I am Brother Matthew. Thank you for tuning in once again. He will lift up Jesus Delivered by our General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye. Chapter 15. In John chapter 15, you'll find here that the Lord has a lot to say to his own disciples. I'm sure that if you're a student of the Bible, you understand that from John chapter 13, the Lord concentrated on talking to the believers, the children of God, the disciples. And actually, these were true genuine disciples now because Judas Iscariot is no more in their midst. In John chapter 13, Judas Iscariot had taken his leave. He went out in the night as Satan filled his heart. And the Lord said, go do what you want to do. And I remain with just the disciples. And then he told these disciples from chapter 14, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you believe also in me. And then he said, in my father's house are many mansions. And then he went on and on. At the end of that chapter 14, he said in verse 27, I give you peace, not as the world giveth the peace, but my peace I give unto you. And now he comes to chapter 15, still with his own disciples. And so this is an in-house message. This is something that he gave to his own people. And thank God we are the people of God. And here God himself is addressing us. Let me read to you from John chapter 15. I am the vine. And my father is the husband man. That he is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that she may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Remember once again, he was talking to these committed disciples, converted disciples. And the people that stayed with him to the very end, Jesus, Judas was not there, that's why he could say, Ye are clean, now you are clean through the word which has spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth fruit, much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing, if a man abide not in me. Remember, I was talking to disciples, there were no sinners there. In fact, there were no backsliders there at that time. And there was no betrayer there at that time. These were real disciples, true disciples. And yet he was warning them, if any man, any of you will not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch. And is, is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you. Now he tells us how to abide in him. Because it's not here physically. It says if we remain with the word and the word remains with us. He is identified with the word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, abiding with Him is abiding in the Word. Allowing Him in us is allowing the Word in us. That's why it says, if ye abide in me, what does that mean? My Word abiding in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Verse 8, herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear, what? Much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. You see what the Lord is telling us? He's telling us about fruit 
bearing, fruit bearing. In fact, in this short passage, it mentions fruit many, many times. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit. And in the same verse 2, it's talking about the fruit. And it says, Every, every branch that beareth fruit. By the end of that verse 2, it's talking about more fruit. And then you come to verse 4, it's still talking about fruit. And it said in verse 4, Abide in me, and I in you. And as the branch cannot bear fruit, fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me see talking about the fruit look at verse 5 it says I'm the vine and ye are the branches he that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit and then look at verse 8 in verse 8 herein is my father glorified that she bear much fruit and look at verse 16 in verse 16 ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain and that whatsoever you shall ask of the father in my name he may give it you this tells us then the most important thing the indispensable thing the essential thing and the non-negotiable in a relationship of the Lord, it is bearing fruit. In fact, the vine exists for nothing else except just bearing fruit. And he says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And the reason why you have any attachment to me, any association with me, any connection with me, is that you will bear fruit. And I read it to you already in so many verses of that passage. I was talking about the fruit. What kind of fruit is he talking about? Let's look at Matthew chapter 3 verse 8. Matthew chapter 3 verse 8. And this is what he's saying that if we have any attachment, association with him, we must bear this kind of fruit. Matthew chapter 3 verse 8. Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Fruits of repentance. That you should realize you are a sinner. And you understood that sin will destroy you. And drag you down to the very lowest and hottest part of hell. And because of that you turn and you embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can say, the places I used to go, I go there no more. The things I used to do, I do that no more. And the things I used to say, I say that no more. And the things I used to wear, I wear that no more. A new thing and suffer and bringing forth fruits of repentance. I'm looking at Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Bring forth fruit. The reason why we have any association, attachment unto Christ as the vine and we are the branches. The reason why is because what will be a fruit? Number one, the fruit of repentance. Galatians 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Meekness, temperance, and self-control, self-discipline against such there is no law. It tells us this is what he expects from the branch in the vine. We're looking at Romans chapter 6, verse 22. Fruit, fruit. That's what he's interested in, and that's why we have this connection with him. Romans chapter 6, verse 22. But now be made free from sin. If you have any contact with Christ, that's what it produces. He liberates us. He delivers us. He sets us free. Free from sin. He says, but now be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruits. What kind of fruit? Tell me. Unto holiness. And the end everlasting life. You see what the Lord is saying? Fruit of repentance. And fruit of the Spirit. And fruit unto holiness. In Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 11. Philippians chapter 1 verse 11. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness. 
the scripture explains itself. It tells us, abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. When we abide in him, we're bearing the fruits of righteousness. That was 11, look at it, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. In Hebrews chapter 12, we're looking at verse 11. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. As Jesus was spending the last week, the week of passion, going to the cross, he left this with his disciples. He said, I'll soon be gone. And I will never leave you and you will never leave me. You make up your mind. You're going to follow me to the very end because the branch ought to abide and remain in the vine. And as you remain, understand, the branch is not for decoration. The branch is for fruit bearing. And here is the fruit you are to bear. Repentance and righteousness and holiness and love and peace and joy and endurance and steadfastness and self-control and temperance. Now it tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 11. Now no chastening of the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. That's it again. It yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. In James chapter 3. James chapter 3. And we're reading there from verse 18. James chapter 3 verse 18. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. The fruit of righteousness. As you come to John chapter 15 there, you understand? As the Lord repeatedly talks about fruit. You know the kind of fruit he wants us to bear. Then in John chapter 4 verse 36. John chapter 4 verse 36. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. So when it was also to be a fruit and gather people and lead people to salvation, to faith in Christ, to conversion, to redemption, bring them to life eternal. So that those souls were not just winning them and joining an assembly, joining a congregation, joining a denomination. They are to bring, we are to bring them into life eternal. It says we are bringing fruit unto life eternal that both he that soweth and he that reapeth joys together. Let's come back now to our passage, our text today, which is John chapter 15. I want to look at the blessedness of an abiding, fruitful relationship. The blessedness of a blessed thing it is. As the Lord himself brings us to himself and he says, I am the vine. My father is the husband. My father is the vine dresser. And he takes care of the vine and takes care of the branches. And then he prunes, he purges, he cleanses, he purifies so that the branch, every branch will bear fruit. And he says that is the reason why he calls us to himself the blessedness of an abiding, fruitful relationship. We're looking at this and studying this under three subtitles. Number one, Christ's relationship with abiding believers. Christ's relationship with abiding believers. Those who have believed on him. The relationship he sustains. The relationship he keeps with his own people. Christ's relationship with abiding believers. Number two. Christ's rejection of abominable Backsliders. Christ's rejection of abominable backsliders. The Lord Jesus had seen that since he started his earthly ministry. That's the time we're told, and many of his disciples walked no more with him. 
backsliders. And then we're told very recently in the previous chapters of Judas Iscariot that they went out because Satan entered into him. Abominable, apostate, backslider. And Christ says he rejects them and the Father rejects them. Christ's rejection of abominable backsliders. Number three, constant renewal for abundant fruit bearing. Constant renewal. The Father purging, the Father pruning, the Father cleansing, the Father refining, the Father renewing, the Father refreshing, us so that we can bear fruit and more fruit and much fruit. Constant renewal for abundant fruit bearing. Number one, Christ's relationship with abiding believers. We're looking at John chapter 15, and we're reading from verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. That word husband man there means the vine dresser, the one that protects, the one that cares. The one that cleanses, the one that prunes, and the one that cuts up redundant parts of the branches so that the branch will be set free to bear abundant fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Look at the relationship in verse 5. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. You know, the Lord always taught in practical ways. And the Lord will use something they could see to tell them, to show them what they could not see. Every, every one of them knew the vine. If you have never seen the vine, of course, you've seen other trees. And you've seen those trees having branches. And what do you learn about that? One, there is a close intimacy, association, attachment between the tree and the branch. And the Lord is saying, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. That means we are not far apart from him, we are associated with him. And it is repentance and faith in him and believing of the Lord Jesus Christ that brings that intimacy, that association, and it's actually the conversion that has brought that about. What do you know about the tree and the branches? What we know is that the same sap, the same nutrients in the tree, in the trunk, is also in the branches. That means the same grace, the same spiritual, supernatural strength and power in Christ the vine also flows into the branches. That means we share His life. We share His grace. We share his ability and we share his characteristics. When you become a child of God, you are born again. You are not like you used to be anymore. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. And because of this association with Christ and because of this relationship with Christ, Things have become totally different. His life is our life. 